Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is June the 19th, 2017. Seems like yesterday, about 19 hours ago, a U.S.-led coalition shot down a government jet attacking Syrian defense forces in the Tabqa area. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Forgive me if I hatch it the names of these towns or cities or whatever they are. So let's look at this. International Coalition downed our jet on a combat mission against ISIS near Rasafa in Southern Raqqa Government. The pilot was KIA. And that's according to a Syrian military report, again 19 hours ago. It seems that an hour after that, CENTCOM confirms that the USFA-18E shot down the Syrian Air Force SU-22 near Tabqa this evening. At 6.43 p.m., a Syrian regime SU-22 dropped bombs near SDF fighters south of Tabqa in accordance with rules of engagement and in collective self-defense of coalition partner forces was immediately shot down by USFA-18E Super Hornet. And there is a statement here by the coalition. The coalition defends partner forces from Syrian fighter jet attack Southwest Asia at approximately 4.30 p.m. Syria time, June 18th, pro-Syrian regime forces attacked the Syrian Democratic Forces held town of Jadin, south of Tabqa, wounding a number of SDF fighters and driving the SDF from the town. Coalition aircraft conducted a show of force and stopped the initial pro-regime advance toward the SDF-controlled town. Following the pro-Syrian forces attack, the coalition contacted its Russian counterparts by telephone via an established deconfliction line to de-escalate the situation and stop the firing. At 6.43 p.m., a Syrian regime SU-22 dropped bombs near SDF fighters south of Tabqa and in accordance with the rules of engagement and in collective self-defense of coalition partner forces it was immediately shot down by USFA 18E Super Hornet. Jadin sits approximately two kilometers north of an established east-west SDF Syrian regime deconfliction area. The coalition's mission is to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria. The coalition does not seek to fight Syrian regime, Russian, or pro-regime forces partner with them, but will not hesitate to defend coalition or partner forces from any threat. The coalition presence in Syria addresses the imminent threat ISIS in Syria poses globally. The demonstrated hostile intent and actions of pro-regime forces toward coalition and partner forces in Syria conducting legitimate counter-ISIS operations will not be tolerated. The coalition calls on all parties to focus their efforts on the defeat of ISIS, which is our common enemy and the greatest threat to regional and worldwide peace and security. And then at approximately the same time as that announcement came out by the coalition forces, heavy clashes between Syrian defense forces and Assad forces around South Topka hour after that, unconfirmed reports that the Tiger forces captured five SDF YPG militants near Tabqa. 17 hours ago, the FA-18 which shot down the SU-22 as a part of Carrier Air Wing 8 operating off the Bush aircraft carrier currently in the Mediterranean. Which makes me wonder how much we are really still using Interlink Air Base, especially when on June 6, Germany moved out. See, that makes me kind of wonder if Erdogan is going towards Russia. And actually, it's in Russia's and Turkey's best interest to partner up. And if Erdogan were to leave NATO, which I really believe that he is just about ready to do, that is going to send a big signal and a shock through the Middle East. Things will turn around rapidly in a different direction. But let's get back to the war map. Six hours ago, the Russian foreign minister calls on U.S. to respect Syria's integrity and refrain from unilateral actions. Five hours ago, Moscow is alarmed and concerned at U.S. shooting down of Syrian government jet 
all operations on the ground must get Damascus's approval. Five hours ago, Russia says shooting down Syrian warplane by U.S. is a hostile action that serves terrorism. According to the Syrian Defense Forces, four hours ago, pro-Assad forces were mounting large-scale attacks against our position southwest Raqqa in recent days while fighting ISIS. Russia says the U.S. did not warn its military on downing Syrian plane. Remember when our coalition said that it did in the statement? Russia says the repeated fighting of the United States of America under the cover of counterterrorism against the legitimate armed forces of a member of state is a flagrant violation of international law and in fact military aggression against the Syrian Arab Republic. Moreover, in Syrian airspace, the tasks of Russian code were carried out at this time. However, the coalition forces did not use the existing channel of communication between the Air Force Base in Qatar and the Air Base to prevent incidents in Syrian airspace. We view the actions of the American command as a deliberate failure to comply with its obligations under the Memorandum on the Prevention of Incidents in Aviation Security during Syrian Operations in 2015. The Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation since June 19th has ceased to interact with the American side within the framework of the Memorandum on the Prevention of the Incidents in Aviation Security during Operations in Syria and calls for a thorough investigation by the American Command with information on its results. And in the areas of Russian aviation in the sky, all air facilities, including aircraft and unmanned vehicles of the International Coalition found west of the Euphrates, will be escorted by Russian air-to-air -air defense aircraft as assets. And while all this is going on, Turkey says that two civilians today were killed and seven injured after shelling by the PKK and PYD on the cities of Maria and Azaz in northern Syria. Now, we are partnered also with the PYD, so it really is starting to look as though Turkey will definitely partner up with Russia, and things may change as of tomorrow, but who knows. And again, I need to point out to you the importance of Turkey. I cannot tell you enough how important Turkey is to Russia because of the Bosporus Straits and the Dardanelles. If Turkey drops out of NATO, that will give Russia and Turkey full control over the Black Sea. Why is that important? Because a lot of Central Europe's exports go down a river through here and into the Black Sea. It will cut off the cheapest export route from Central European countries to the east. It also just so happens to be a place where China's One Belt, One Road comes around, and it's in this area. I don't know exactly where it is because I've seen it on different maps kind of differently, but it does wrap around here somewhere around the Black Sea, and that's where Israel is very significant because if the Black Sea is cut off from Europe for trading, they have the Mediterranean, and they can go through here to Israel. Now, speaking of Israel, the Wall Street Journal posted an article titled, Israel's involvement with Syrian rebels is much deeper and more coordinated than previously known, which really goes together with the video I posted titled, Jared Kushner's Ties. And I was talking about the Golan Heights in there. So let's see if there's something in here that we don't know about. Israel has been regularly supplying Syrian rebels near its border with cash as well as food, fuel, and medical supplies for years. A secret engagement in the enemy's country's civil war aimed at carving out a buffer zone populated by friendly forces. The Israeli army is in regular communication with rebel group and its assistance includes undisclosed payments to commanders that help pay salaries of fighters and buy ammunition and weapons. Wow, I'm wondering if when al-Sisi exposed the supporters of terrorism in the Gulf nations that he may have been referring to Israel as well. Hmm possibility, huh? 
Well, let's get back to the article. Israel has in the past acknowledged treating some 3,000 wounded Syrians, many of them fighters, in its hospitals since 2013, as well as providing humanitarian aid such as food and clothing to civilians near the border during winter. Well, I think Al Sisi mentioned that as well. But interviews with a half dozen rebels and three people familiar with Israel's thinking reveal that the country's involvement is much deeper and more coordinated than previously known and entails direct funding of opposition fighters near its border for years. Israel stood by our side in a heroic way said the spokesman for the rebel group Knights of the Golan who wouldn't have survived without Israel's assistance. Well would you look at that? This is what I point out every time I do a video on the Syrian war map because it's incredible that ISIS is right next to Israel and doesn't attack. So now I think it's time to quench the haters right now because you know they're not going to finish watching this video to this part and learn a little something because they're so angry because their Freemason preachers told them that Israel is the chosen ones. You have to protect Israel. People like Glenn Beck and David Barton and all them. The ones that are pulling your leg so hard that it's a wonder you still have a leg. Anyway, what happened was Rothschild, the guy who controls all the money in the world, he had a religion created, which was called Zionism. They used a lot of pertinent names out of the Bible in this new Zionistic religion. And it was in order to control Christians. So later on down the line, they knew that the Christians would be protecting the Israelis, the Israelites, the Jews, whatever you want to call them, the Zionists. Many people call them Zionists. But I have to say, first of all, the people that live in Israel, the people that are Zionists, they don't want to kill no one. They're decent people. Not Rothschild, not the ones at the top, but they are being used just like all of us are. We all have a part to play like America. America's part is to be the stupid brainwashed idiots into thinking that everybody loves us and everybody's so friendly. But in reality, people want to kill us and they've been brainwashed just the opposite of us. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, Rothschild had Israel created. A few years before Zionism was created, there were three world wars written by Albert Pike. The first two were exactly as he predicted. This last one is between the Zionists and the Muslimen, the Muslims and the Zionists. Zionism really hadn't been fully established at that time. Also, isn't it odd that um, at the same time that Albert Pike wrote those three world wars that they enfolded in to the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry the ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine that was in order for the Muslims to be controlled much much better they can control the Imams that way and you go on down the line to the world wars and you if you study them especially if you can find Google some generals books from each of the world wars, you will get the truth. Anyway, when you look at this map and you look at this, this little tiny place here called Israel and you think about Rothschild, what he did and when they created Israel, which was created in a day, which is biblical, of course, but who created Israel? Was it God or was it the United Nations? think about it, read about it, study it, you'll find out. The United Nations created Israel within a day and then they called all the Jews to come back to Israel in this hotbed of Islamic hatred. And no, not all Muslims hate, but it's a hotbed here. So these people risk their lives for the religion like most people do. When they believe in something, they'll risk their life for it. They came back to this place here 
because they were told to come back home where they belong. They listened and they did it, and it was a very joyous occasion for them. But they didn't know about the plan like Rothschild did. Think about it. And I think I've ran my mouth enough. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off, and as always, I've got your six.